What's going on, everybody? This is Taj Deshaun, Vice President of Self Publishing 30 Days. Welcome back to another very special episode of Author Spotlight. I'm here today with my man, Eugene Holloman. What's up, Eugene? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. I've been a fan of what you've been doing for a long time. Quick story before we dive into Eugene's story and all that. This was probably about two years ago. I was on LinkedIn. I was scrolling through and uh, I seen him put up a post where he was working on the book. I believe it was in 2018, you were probably working on sophomore year, right? Of the, of the book. Yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm scrolling through and he took a picture of the book he was working on and it was just one paragraph in the picture and I'm reading it and I'm like, this is dope. I don't know like what the rest of the book is about, but you know, I consider myself, I'm a pretty tough critic when it comes to writing. So I like, if, I, mm. if a book doesn't interest me, I just put it away. And just from that one paragraph, I was like, this man is a talented writer. And since then, I've been able to follow the journey and watch everything he's been doing. But let me read the bio so I can get out the way so you know who we did. Man, it's today. been two years ago. That's crazy. Um, time, time flies, man. Time Isn't it, flies. man? Isn't yeah. it? But just to get, all right, I'm going to let the people know, in the case they've been living under a rock and they don't know who you are, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Eugene yeah, Holloman is a former two-time all-conference running back at James Madison University. Growing up, he had aspirations of playing pro football after college, but after two significant knee surgeries before his senior year, his plans were derailed. So we're going to get into, I think that's a great part to start, a great point for us to start, man, because I want to talk about the books. In case you don't know, Eugene's also the author of The Athlete Student. Freshman and sophomore year is out now. Go get that. Junior yep. year is in the works, folks. But yep. Absolutely. Let's just, let's just dive in, man, because, you know, this is going to be on the Thrive After Sports podcast as well. So I think a good start off point would be to talk about what happens after those two knee surgeries. Like, were you able to bounce back? How did the journey unfold from there? So I, I think I got to give a little context before I, I, I jump in there. So um, my, my junior year at JMU, I'm, I'm killing it. Um, I was I transferred in from a junior college, so I, I technically started off as a junior when, when I arrived at JMU, and they already had uh, these two senior running backs who were all conference that led JMU to a national championship, um, you know, a, a year prior. And so I was supposed to, you know, red shirt since I never red shirted before, but spring ball came around and I was I was killing it. Basically, the way it works is that the number two defense goes against the, excuse me, the number one defense goes against the, the, the number two offense, like quote unquote, like the scout team. I number one defense, uh, they couldn't go, it, it got me that, um, you know, all conference running backs got hurt, another one got suspended and I was the next man up. And so we, we go to Appalachian State, who was the number one team um, in the nation at the time. And that was my coming out party. And from there, I never relinquished my, my starting spot. I ended up, you know, rushing for, you know, um, 1,200 yards, um, whatever, how many touchdowns, name all conference. And, um, you know, going to my senior year, I was, I was projected to get drafted. Um, we had uh, University of North Carolina on our schedule, like a, a big time, you know, ACC opponent. Um, you know, the scouts who come in to see me play um, after your junior year, you do a junior day where the scouts come time you. Um, I clocked the full three, like everything was lining up for me. You know, my dreams were, were about to come true. And um, University of North Carolina, I remember taking a, a pitch to the right and they had this, um, you know, this, this, this beastie defensive line, bro, like just, just mammals up there. And two would come barreling down on me. I ended up, you know, trying to go uh, left, I was going right, stuck my foot in the ground. And just like that, man, I shattered, you know, some ligaments in my knee. And I saw my dreams, you know, just just uh, vanish right then and there. It's like, it was, it was, you know, it was hard to kind of envision me coming back and, and being the same person that I was definitely when you go through two knee surgeries. So um, from there, man, I, I did graduate JMU, but uh, education was not in my, in my in my four view, right? It's not. It wasn't a big thing to me. It was football, 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 and so I, I did graduate. But my major was something that I wasn't interested in. It was just something that kept me eligible. And I came back home uh, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and um, I went through like two and a half years of deep depression. Um, mind you, because you, you you know like you you have this dream since you was five and you get to be, you know, 20 years old, and you can still see that dream, and then it just snatched away from you. You know what I mean? I put all my energy and effort 
into that and and just to see it go like yeah, it, it did something to me psychologically where um I wanted to like in my life like I was looking for my father's gun one time like man I'm just I can't do this no more like and um you know good thing my my, my father was good at hide and seek because I couldn't find it um and I was I was going to just do it right then and there and just think about it, like something just because of a football right so it, it seemed big at the time when I think about it now and I laugh like man life is much bigger than that but at the time it was football 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 this is how I was going to you know take care of my family this is how I was going to live this um, magnificent lifestyle like I see these athletes you know live on MTV cribs or on Instagram right the have the flyest cars have the the all the honeys you know what I'm saying um and so you know it, it was it was devastating um and I, I battled um, and I didn't believe in therapists or knew anything about therapy at the time. So I was trying to um, manage this thing myself and it was, it was tough. And I wish I would have went to a therapist. I could have, you know, maybe came out this thing a, a lot earlier, uh, perhaps maybe the school could have provided a, ther a therapist or something, but I, I dealt with it on my own and I didn't deal with it to the best of my ability, you know, granted, I was thinking about suicide. So I'll, I'll stop there because I can go on and on, but uh, that's how bad it got for me. Eugene, man, I just want to say thank you for being vulnerable enough to share that part of your story because, yeah. you know, I think a lot of, well, we know a lot of athletes go through that, man, uh, to the point where you were yeah. considering taking your own life. I had a few of those thoughts myself, you know what I mean? And I didn't even have the big dream of going to the NFL. I knew I wasn't going to the NFL, man, but still just having mm -hmm. that loss of identity and just trying to figure out who I was in the world, those thoughts started to creep up. Like, man, my life is over. I'm a nobody now, you know? Um, and like you said, man, athletes have a, have such a, a tough mm -hmm. time reaching out for help or just seeking out help or even knowing that we need help. What was it that brought you out of that space? Like, did you eventually start seeking help or did you start doing a lot of work, internal work on yourself? Or what took you from the place where you're looking for your father's gun to like where you are now? What was like the, the next thing that got you out of that space? Actually, it was one defining moment. And so uh, when I couldn't find my father's gun, I, I actually called, you know, a friend of mine and I told him, you know, what I was about to do, what I've been struggling with. Because, you know, everybody, when, when you're even at the level of JMU, it's not like a, a big time SEC football team or anything, but when you're balling out and your name is in the paper, they selling your jerseys in a bookstore, right? People latch on to you, people calling you every day. They wanna come up to the school and party with you after the games. And then when you get to the point where it's all gone, your phone stops ringing. And um, and even even then people think like, all right, you went to college, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's all right. And, but I wasn't okay. And so I, I portrayed like I was okay um, to everybody else. But, you know, behind closed doors, I was struggling. But I ended up, making a long story short, calling someone, a friend of mine, and I, and I, I was vulnerable. And um, instead of him just dismissing me, telling me I'm weak, he listened to me. And he said something um, that resonated with me to this day. He said, um, the same energy that you had when you were a football player i'm talking about that that competitive nature right um that getting up at you know four o'clock in the morning to hit the weights to to go to practice to to take constructive criticism from your coaches uh the the, the ability to persevere um um the, demonstrating leadership capabilities across you know the campus and, and and to your your team you apply that to your to your life like you didn't go through these things for nothing there's a lot of you know um um life lessons that were in there that can be transferred outside and so that thing clicked and so I was like man I'm gonna I'm fill out these applications and not take no for an answer to uh, at least find me a job to take care of myself and and ever since then man I'm like I did learn a lot like like football was like a college major you just don't think about it like that and when I started to uh, process it and, and and see things from that perspective the game changed for me it changed because I'm, I'm now competing. Like, I, I want to be the best at my job. I want to be the best. It's just like I would do a game. Like, it's, it's wins and losses. And, and the times that I lost, I didn't get the job. Like, I can I can go back and see what I did wrong, just like we do in football. We watch the film. Like, all right, I, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. All right, now I know the next time it comes, I, can, I know how to do it better. And so we, we, we tend to forget that. But we have, um, as athletes, no matter what level, we are given um, some, some really unique, 
uh, characteristics and and the development of those characteristics that that can be applied that 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 the average person can't match if we are able to tap into it. Right, that's the key. I love that you shared that too, man. If we're able to tap into it, yeah. and you did a great job of doing that, mm-hmm. and not only did you find or put yourself into a position where you can earn a living, take care of yourself, which is half the battle, right? Like, so you don't have to feel like you're a burden to anybody yeah. or. You know, I've been right, right, you right. Know, waking up in my childhood bedroom was one of the hardest things for me after college, man. Like all my little Pop Warner trophies and stuff. I'm like, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, but you took it a step further. Not only were you able to bounce back and put yourself in position, but you decided you were going to leave a legacy behind and contribute to the next generation of up and coming athletes. So how did the, the athlete student mm-hmm. book series come about? Like what made you decide to write a book? So I got to go back and give you context to that too. So when I I, love when I finally found when when I finally found my first job, man, um, is at a healthcare uh, organization, which I, I currently still work to to this day. Um, I started off making eleven dollars an hour. Like it was, it's. I mean, let's let's face it. It's not a lot of money, definitely for a college graduate. You think you can, you know, at least you know make a salary after you know the hard work of you know kind of going through the rigors of school. But I um, I started started off making eleven dollars an hour, and then I heard about this leadership development program that was a big thing uh, for young recent graduates across the company. And I was like, I, I'm gonna apply for this bad boy. And they were, everybody was talking, you know, telling me how I couldn't get into it. They don't really accept internal candidates and this, that, and the third. And so I, I sought out a, a mentor who kind of just, um, you know, helped me so much. I used to wear like t-shirts to work and you know what I'm saying? Like white <laughs> tees. And it got to the point where he, um, he, he helped me to kind of like uh, represent myself better to, to even though like dress for the job, basically little stuff that I didn't necessarily think that factored in. And I was um, setting up meetings with these executives, like getting FaceTime with them. And this was a really competitive um, leadership development program where a thousand of the applicants each year and they only accept 10, they only accept 10 um, associates. So you had people flying from Stanford. It was two girls that flew in from um, LSU. It was like, it was, it was huge because they do like just one all day interview process where you go to dinner, um, you do like a, a fishbowl exercise, and then you, you, you go through this rigor of, of interviewing uh, against four different, four different interviews, basically. And um, I prepared for that thing. Like we were playing for the national championship. Like I, I gave it all. And um, two weeks later, I found out I was one of the 10, um, 10 selected. So I went from making $11 an hour um, to be transparent to, to 45000 a year for the two-year program. And uh, one of the other um, selectees into the program um, happens to be one of my best friends right now, um, one of the smartest guys I know. And we used to sit down and uh, write down goals every year. And um, one of my goals that we both, you know, uh, wrote down was to continue our education. And so at this point, I was finishing up, you know, my master's degree. Um, he was like, you know, you should go back and get your doctorate. And I was like, I ain't going back to get no doctor degree. I'm done with school, man. I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> and he was like, because um, I had to, you know, take out student loans for my master's. He was like, this is a way you can get you know, those loans deferred. And then I was like, shoot, I, I, I ain't trying to pay on these student loans and so the company will you know basically pay my, my doctoral degree um and so i enrolled and then uh, you know the first uh, i think um paper i had to write was some long like 15 page leadership paper and i was like man this thing is like this thing is trash and i gave it to my <laughs> professor and um you know she had some constructive you know feedback for me but at the end she was like eugene i think you are a really good writer Another light bulb went off in my head. She was like, my professor, she could have been lying to me. I don't know. She was like, I, I think you're a really good writer. And so and so I was like, I'm going to write about something I want to write about. And I just started writing, um, you know, the athlete student freshman year because I had the idea in my head. Um, I, I kind of lived it. I've seen other people live it too, that, you know, athletics is, is, our, is our way out. If you come from the inner city, you know, this is the first gift that you find. It's, it's easy to identify that gift. It's hard to identify another gift like writing or um, 
um, someone who's like um, a good debater or, you know, whatever those gifts are, um, good with their hands. But athletics is, is easy. You, you run fast or you're out in the playing how to go seek and, and you're quicker than everybody else. Oh, oh this, this guy is this guy's going to be the next such and such. And so that thing can stick with you. And this is a way that you can take your mom, mama out the hood or you don't have to struggle. And so for the inner city, this is how we get to college. Like I couldn't afford college. Um, you know, getting a scholarship was my only way that I was going to see college, definitely with my GPA. And, and so make a long story short, that is how I, you know, start writing it uh, just by going through that whole process. I mean, it was a, a long, maybe three, four year process, um, just meeting people, people recognizing something in myself and then having the boldness to just, just say, man, get it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to put it out there. And, and that's what I did, man. And now I'm on, you know, my third book and I'm, I'm going to finish the series and I'm, it's just getting better and better too. Yeah. I'll say it's definitely getting better and better, man. Um, can you give a breakdown? Cause when you, when you were going into it, was the plan all along to do a series, meaning like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, or were you just like, I'm going to write this book and focus on this book right now? Or was it like, was that the plan all along? Um, that was my plan all along. I was like, I'm gonna do freshman year because, you know, I was a new, I, I was a new writer. So I was looking for ways to, to kind of extend and get better at my craft. And I was like, four books sound like a, a, a good starting point. And so <laughs> as I was writing, like, I'm, I'm the type of person where I just sit in my room alone and I just write and then it just comes to me. And I was like, yeah, I got a way to like really tell this story so kids can just see you know, the, the growth and the mistakes and um, everything that really happens, they can they can get a, a full panoramic view of this character. And I wanted to I wanted to do that. And so one book wouldn't wouldn't have suffice. And my target audience, you know what I'm saying? In the city, we don't necessarily like to read books. I didn't read books in high school and I get it. And so I needed to keep it uh, short, um, very entertaining um, and something that they could relate to to want to pick up a book. And so I, I understood that. And for me to do it, I, I would have to break it down. And so, um, you know, when they when they read a short book, it's, it's an accomplishment. Like, man, I read a book. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so to be able to put out four that they can read, they can add that to, you know what I'm saying? A, a list of accomplishments. Like I, I read four books and, and, and it's something that I can relate to and take something away from. I love it, man. I think that's so great that you had the audience in mind the whole time. You know what I mean? Where, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you read some books and you can tell that it's autobiographical in nature. There's nothing wrong with the autobiography, but a lot of people love telling their life story versus putting a book out to be like, this is intended for this audience to help them in this way. And you're so clear about articulating that mm -hmm. message. Um, I, I wanted to ask you this too, because I already know the answer, but I want the audience to be able to hear you could have called it the student athlete, but you called it the athlete student where the athlete is first. So can you can you please tell people why what the reason is behind that? Just so we're clear on that part of it. Uh, man, so people think when you get a scholarship, right, you are guaranteed four years. But I've seen ways where like, uh, you know, they recruit these kids and they think and they're going to be the next big thing. And they and they they get into the program and they stink it up they find ways to take that scholarship and give it to somebody else. And mm. there's so many loopholes and everything. And then even when you are one of the, the good athletes, man, ap athletics does come first. They say focus on your grades first, but if you do that, like um, they, they will find somebody else to replace you. So for example, I knew this, this smart, um, he was like one of one at JMU where he was an accounting major and at JMU, that's a, a pretty big deal. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a, a huge time commitment. And for the summer, the coaches want you there at the summer working out, getting ready for the season. But he had this massive internship. And you know they used that against him because he wasn't there in the summer and he was he was taking this internship. Like everybody can't fully commit to the program. We're trying to better our lives for after school. But no, to these coaches who, who are getting paid millions of dollars, like their, their livelihood is for you to, to develop and get better. So they ultimately can keep their job and, and that's by winning games. And so, yeah, you, you are quote unquote a student athlete, but if you're not balling first and doing what you're supposed to do on the athletic side, you, you're not going to get to experience the, the fruits of being a student. Um, and that's just, that's just transparency 
Philadelphia at his, at his finest. And if you go through it, you understand it. Like, man, you get up at a four o'clock in the morning to be at weightlifting, right? Um, then you, you got to watch film. And your classes are scheduled around that. You're, it's not the other way around. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's the athletic stuff come first. And um, I, I'm just I'm just being honest. And, and, and of course, it's a, it's a play on words. But when you read the book, you see all that he has to do. Um, it's like having two full time jobs. Um, and that's and that's crazy to think about, like 16 hours of your day. You're trying to do all the stuff on the athletic side, but you still got your schoolwork. And um, a wise man once told me a student athlete only has time for three things. That's one of the athletics, two, being a student, and three is like the, the your social life. You only, mm-hmm. It's three things that's competing for your time, but you only have time for two of them. Athletics has to be there, right? It, it has to be there because um, if, you, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do on the field or, or, or you know, around the locker room and whatnot, whatnot, they can pull that scholarship. So that means um, either, either your social life is going to suffer or the academic part is going to suffer. And for 18, 19 year old, you want to experience what college has to offer. And so that's why a lot of times people struggle in school or don't reach their full ability. Um, and it's not because they're not smart enough. It's just the lot that's competing for, you know, your time and attention at a very young age with the first time you really experience, you know, freedom. Right. Yeah. That's long. Thank I you keep for giving it. you these long answers, bro. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm cut them down. No, please I, I don't, like man. Explain, you know, just the thought process. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, please don't, man. This is all great. This is all great material. This is perfect. This is exactly what, you know, I'm asking you these questions because I want you to go in depth about this type of stuff. You know what I mean? I want the audience to hear this because not everyone will know when they see the athlete student, not everyone is going to know why you put that first. You and I know, obviously, but that's why I wanted wanted to ask you that so you could go into it, you know? And to your point, man, you know, I don't want to get too deep into into the murky waters here, but we both we also know that there are certain players. I'll just leave it at that. Certain players where the coaching staff may have a little bit more leniency about what they want to do, right? Like certain players are allowed. So we had a quarterback, and the quarterback, uh, he he was like a med student, like a pre med student, and oftentimes he would show up to practice late. Or, you know, it was understood, like, he can't be in film right now because he's in class because they're understanding he's setting mm-hmm. himself up for life after the game. Whereas you said, you play with a guy where the coaches may hold it against certain players. And in case, in case the listeners didn't catch the drift, certain yeah. players are treated differently than other players because they're looked at in a different light versus, mm-hmm. you know, they're here just to, to be workhorses and play the sport versus, oh, we want to make sure they're set up after the game. Of course, during the recruiting process, the player, the coaches promise yeah. all players that they're going to be set up. But certain players, like I said, we'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Certain players get a different type of treatment. So thank you for sharing all that, man, because I think that's that's key for people to get a, a look under the hood in case they haven't experienced that firsthand, you know? Yep. A lot of politics involved. And then, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then also, man, I wanted I wanted you because uh, this is my fault. I didn't tell the listeners what what the the book is actually about. It's a, it's based off a fictional character. Can you just dive into what they can expect from you know freshman and now junior year coming out and then senior year. Yeah. So um, so it's, it's about this this young man named Tootie who's a, a phenomenal athlete, right? Um, way better than I ever was, and I'm I'm just being you know, honest about it, but he has these aspirations of, you know, being a, um, a NFL athlete, an NFL superstar. So he, um, he's, he's, he's committed his life to reaching his goals, but before he can do that, you know, with, with football, you got to go through college. And so it takes you through the, the ups, the downs, the, how he deals with coaches, um, is the, 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 the popularity, um, dealing with females, um, balancing class, uh, and just the, the, the pitfalls, um, and the successes of, of being a student athlete to ultimately, uh, reach his goal. And so I wanted to, to really tell a story of the things that, that happens on a college campus. And this book is not necessarily just for athletes per se. Like if you've been to college or, um, you watch football as a fan, 
you can you can take away a lot from this um and so it allows you to have a different perspective of when you even watch you know these student athletes play and sometimes we can just watch it for the wins and losses but we don't know what they're really dealing with and this paints that picture of the just the the, the pressure that comes with it um the responsibility that comes with it and, and every one doesn't handle it um you know by the book and uh this this character that has a lot of have, have a lot of flaws and i wanted to, to put that out there so young kids can uh can get an understanding of of the decisions that we make you know consequences are attached to it um that I mean, life is bigger than just sports or what you know people portray on us and so there's so many different life lessons um and it's not one set go uh many people would take many different things away from this but i, I wanted to put it out there uh the to, 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 to provide a, a realistic story to our youth of just the many gifts that they can have if they put, if they put their mind to it and don't just be narrowly focused. Mm. You've already done such a great job of accomplishing your mission. You know, it's just like you keep adding layers to the mission that you're already on and the impact that you're already having. Like, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see, like, after junior year comes out, of course, you got senior year. I'm excited to see, like, what is Eugene gonna do next? Now that senior year is done. You oh, know what a, I mean? a movie's a, a movie's coming out, bro. A movie's Let's coming go. out. Like I, 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 I didn't. <laughs> no, I mean I don't Let's know if this go. is gonna happen, but I, I throw my goals, I throw my goals out there. So I, I wrote on a um, piece of paper before I even started freshman year what I wanted to accomplish, or after freshman year finished, what I wanted to accomplish. Like I want to get on Oprah. I want to be a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> And I want to see this thing hit Netflix or even, you know, the theaters, because I, I think it's I think it's that important to our culture. And I'm biased because I wrote it. I understand that. Um, but I think it's really entertaining. Uh, like I think it's a really entertaining novel that can relate to um, a lot of different people, not just the inner city kids. Um, I have a lot of people that you know, who has bought this book from all different types of backgrounds, who have given me rave reviews. And that just given me the confidence to, to know that it is bigger than what I think it is. And so my goals are out there, man. So I'm, so in, in, in five, five years from now, you see this thing on, on Netflix or on the big screen, you hear it here first. That's right, man. Man, you dropping exclusives on here. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> I don't take that lightly because I was just asking for me. I'm like, man, I wonder what Eugene's gonna do next, but you already got it mapped out. New York. Yeah, Congress. I don't Sellers know how I'm gonna get there. Though. I don't know how I'm gonna get there. Hey but. man, I have a feeling it's gonna take care of yourself, man. Like because yeah. you're already putting out such you really are a talented writer, man. And like you said, the stories really are entertaining. So I can definitely like it's almost like as I'm reading the book, I see the movie in my head, you mm -hmm. know. So by the time the senior year comes out, if you start shopping this thing around, man, I have no doubt somebody or you could just fund it yourself and put it out and start. Yeah, you know? I gotta sell, I gotta sell a lot more gobbies to be able to fund this thing myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, so that's what a New York Times bestseller. I, I figure if I can make it there, I, I'm at least approaching a million in sales or something. But honestly, man, COVID has impacted me more than I thought because most of my book sales come from me going up to people, handing them my business card, giving them my elevator pitch. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll go to book. And I've, I've sold so many more books like that compared to online that now like, I can't just go to anybody in my car with the whole COVID-19 right. thing. So it's like um, it has put a dampen, a dampen um, you know, how I like to get the message out there. Because I took the model from Master P. You know, Master P used to have the books in back of his old Cadillac and just go to hood to hood selling his CDs. And that's what I did with the books. They're sitting in, they were sitting in my 2004 that's camera right. and I just popped the trunk, go place to place. And I always have my books on me. Um, but when things get back to normal, I can, I'll continue to do that. I would never, I would never lose that because that gives me a chance to interact with, you know, potential buyers and, and create these, these last relationships. Um, but, you know, um, you know, a lot of people, everybody's impacted by this thing. So I don't want to, you know, make it sound like, you know, it's, it's just books. But, um, you know, I do pray and hope that the world gets back to normal, um, not just only for myself, but, you know, for a lot of people who are, you know, extroverts. I'm an introvert, by the way, but who, who just likes to be around, you know, different people. Mm. Yeah, I hear you, man. I'm an introverted person, too. But even as introverts, we can only be cooped up inside for so long, not being around people, you know. So I feel you, man. Yeah, yeah.
and then also exactly. sinking because I know you were you were taking the book on the road, not just getting it out the trunk, but like actually doing different speaking engagements and being able to have an impact that way. Um, have you seen kind of like a shift lately with just you know virtual speaking events or like opportunities to do that? Because I feel like those are starting to pop up more. Where even universities are reaching out for like, have you seen any of that? Um, I haven't. I haven't done a lot of like I haven't done a lot of podcasts in this season. Um mainly because I've been writing and then with the kids being home, just, you know, been really busy. Um, mm. And so it's, it's been different for me because like I said, when I go and meet people, um, I'm meeting people at the gym, I'm meeting people at the mall. And those things tend to have a, uh, take a life on its own with word of mouth. And so that's how I'm able to, you know, kind of generate the next thing and then the next thing. And so being, you know, virtual and posting things on Facebook and Instagram and, and LinkedIn doesn't create that for me. It doesn't create that positive energy for me like it has when I have, you know, met people and kind of just um, jumped out there and introduced myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is, but um, just for me, I found what works. And unfortunately, you know, um, the COVID thing has put a damper on that, but it'll get back to normal. Yeah, no doubt, man. And I got to ask, you already kind of talked about the, the bestseller list, the New York Times bestseller being on Oprah, the movie, all that kind of stuff. But I got to ask, when you leave this earth, man, what do you want people to remember about Eugene Holliman? Essentially, like, what do you want your legacy to be? Man, it's a, um, that's a really good question. I was actually, you know, thinking about this yesterday. I want to, um, man, that's a good question. I, I, I think about, um, generational legacies a lot like you know leaving such and such to the next generation but this is a way that i not only leave it to my lineage but to um to to strangers ac across the world i don't think um athletics is going anywhere i don't think um the inner city kids who desire better for themselves right the um to make it out they're still gonna have to rely on the physical even though they got it mentally, they're going to rely on it in the physical because our, our culture um, highlights athletics and the glory that comes with it. And so naturally kids are going to want to be that. They're going to want to be the LeBron James, you know, the Kevin Durant, the, the Russell Wilson's of the world, the Michael Jordan's, the Kobe Bryant's, right? Um, they're going to want to be that. And there's going to be a lot of people who push them to do that. And they may not, they may have a shift. They, they, they want to be a, a lawyer or a doctor or president or whatever have it, um, that they can absolutely do that, right? Just because you are gifted in athletics doesn't mean you have to want to go to the NFL or the NBA or MLB or whatever have it. You can absolutely, absolutely do anything you put your mind to. And I think that's just one of the things that comes across in, in the book is that, um, yeah, I was born with this gift that I can run faster, jump higher, but I'm equally impressive uh, intellectual. And sometimes we put that stigma on, definitely on young African-American kids is that they're supposed to be athletic. Like this is what you're supposed to excel in. But the numbers are stacked up against that, right? As you, you know, I mean, everybody can't make it big time, but you are equally impressive what's in here and how you educate yourself. And you can use that to, to reach the highest of heights. And it's not just athletics. And so I want kids to know that. And I want that change where I go into the doctor's office and I see somebody that looks like me. I go to the dentist and I see someone that looks like me. I go wherever. And it's not just about how we look anymore. It's like, are you qualified to do so? And we are you know, the most qualified creatures to do that. But a lot of people don't tell us because we only see majority of the time when we turn on ES in that you know is um we represent the majority of the athletes but we turn on like sitcoms where lawyers and doctors are being played we the minority mm -hmm. and so if that can shift man um and my book can play a small part in that that would be a legacy right there in itself yeah man i think the book plays a huge part in that and i think like i was saying earlier i think you've already accomplished not started to but you like if you if you died today i don't even want to put that out into the universe my bad man but i'm saying you've already accomplished what you set out to accomplish 
and it's only going up from <laughs> here. Like you halfway through through the journey of writing the the four part series. Yeah. So, you know, man, congratulations to you for everything. Uh, like I said, you are you have my respect since 2018. Once I just read that small little segment that you were writing on the book, I'm like, ah, this is real, man. This is legit. This is uh, some real authentic stuff going on here. <laughs> likewise, uh, man. Likewise. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I definitely want to give people a chance to, to find out how they can connect with you, how they can follow you, how they can get copies of the books. Please share all that information with everybody, man. Yeah, um, so um, Instagram, Twitter is GeneDuke14. So G-E-N-E-D-U-K-E, -E, the number 14. Um, also, you can find the books on theathletestudent.com. Um, man, and just, yeah, just email me, reach out. I'm a, a very approachable person. I like to interact with, um, you know, definitely um, a potential uh, readers of the novel. I like to discuss uh, particular things and um, your support is greatly appreciated. Like, like you, Taj, um, being a, a minority author, man, um, you don't necessarily get the credit like you deserve, but it's a, it's an important aspect of just the, mm -hmm. just the whole genre of, of book writing um, that is, is definitely needed. It and our voices need to be heard and it only comes by uh, or comes from the individuals that show that support and so mm -hmm. the more sh support you show um, the quicker the, the the message can get out to reach those who can benefit it from the most I love it man well said everybody please go get in touch with this man go grab the book like he said at the athletestudent.com you know, if you're a former athlete or a current athlete, you will see a lot of yourself as you're reading the story. Uh, it may even, I would argue, as you're reading the story, it can help heal mm -hmm. parts of yourself that may not be healed because you'll be able to relate to that experience um, through the, the fictional character in the book, but also like gift it to your younger siblings, you know, your kids, nieces, nephews, cousins, whoever, so that they can be set up and understand what it's like to go through college and they can be able to have a story that keeps them engaged and entertained so that they can learn the lessons that Eugene has learned throughout his career, but to be able to put that into, you know, a small format, easily digestible, um, definitely go check it out. Great content. Eugene, thank you again for coming on Author Spotlight, man. This has been a dope conversation. We went a million different directions, which I love because there's so much content packed in here. Yeah. Man. You dropped so many gems. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate you, man. We're gonna have to have you back on, especially once the junior year drops. Absolutely, man. Uh, best of luck to you, man. And again, thanks for having me. No doubt, man. Take care, everybody. This has been another episode of Author Spotlight with Eugene Holloman. We'll see you on the next episode.